Hello and welcome to My Home Biz Tips, where we inspire, empower and support home-based business owners so that they can find, create and scale the business of their dreams without sacrificing their sanity or their family. I am Andrea Kuchin and today I am going to introduce you to a tech, technology genius or a technical genius, G.R. Zuniga. Thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me, Andrea. It's interesting to talk to you. I've been working with GR for a little while on a few projects. And one of the things I like most is our brainstorming sessions. Oh, they're As wonderful. anyone who knows me knows that I've, I love brainstorming. And somehow GR and I seem to gel together really well. So I'm really excited about this. This is going to be a fantastic interview. So without... Any further ado, GR, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. Well, what I do is I run an agency called AppTech Group. We um, operate here out of Temecula, California. And what we do is we help small business owners um, basically brand, market, and operate and sell in a modern business world. Um, and we do that by focusing on objectives rather than just, you know, I've got something to sell and I need to sell a million of them. Okay. Um, that, that's, that can get you some money short term that can create some sales and maybe even create a name for you. But most people don't go into business actually mapping out their business and what they really want at the end of it. So that's what we do is we help them achieve those objectives while doing what they do best. So why is I want to sell a million of those not an objective then? Well, because a, a million of them, you may or you may not get to that. And what if your objective truly is that I'd like to create more time and freedom to spend with my family? Well, then if that's the objective, sure, let's map that selling a million widgets to achieving that extra time and freedom with your family. Or maybe it's I want to buy the Lamborghini. That's okay. Every, you know, everybody can have their own dream and their own goals. However, um, selling a million doesn't necessarily map to purchasing that Lamborghini. So what we try and do is help people organize their thoughts, their, their ideas, and then um, help them execute towards whatever that goal is. Okay. So what was behind your decision to become an entrepreneur and start your own business? Oh, that's a great, great question. Um, well, um, growing up, I think I've always had entrepreneurial tendencies. Um, back when I was, I think, oh, I'd say about 10, maybe 11 or 12 years old, um, I had a friend who would stay with me during the summer and my mom would babysit him. And what we would do is we would buy things from the ice cream man um, earlier in the day. I used to live across the street from a park and we knew the last time he came was around 2.30, 3 o'clock, but there were still kids in the summertime. Well, um, at about six o'clock in the evening, we would buy a bunch of things and then go flip them in the park for, for a higher price because the ice cream man wouldn't come around. So I, I've always had those types of tendencies. And I, I grew up in a, in a time where, you know, you were told to go to school, um, get a degree, get a job, and you were going to work that job for the next 30, 40 years and you were going to retire after that. Well, that kind of wasn't my makeup. It wasn't in me. I went along for it with it for 20 plus years. However, after doing it at a really high level, um, reporting to CEOs, working with executives, building huge businesses in billion dollar industries, um, I just was tired of it. I, I was not happy. I would come home miserable. And I just thought, why couldn't I take everything I've learned over the past, past 20 plus years and help other people win and, and achieve their goals? And so I decided, well, going on three years now, I was going to take the leap. Took some convincing of my wife and my family to do it, but I did it. <laughs> right. So when you took that leap and you set up your business from home, which is not a business in a box. You actually created the whole thing completely yourself. Mm -hmm. How long did it take for you to start making money or to have your first big win? 
Oh, wow. So my first big win actually came about three weeks into it. Um, admittedly, oh, wow. I was not ready for that. <laughs> Let, let's be honest. But my first big win was um, about three weeks into it. And that's because, quite frankly, it was a side hustle before I went full time. So I had a little bit of traction going in. Um, however, about three weeks into it, um, I got a funny enough, um, I had saw a fellow coworker from um, previous years, fellow colleague that had opened up their own um, company. And I saw them actually, um, you know, growing. And so what I did is I went and I purchased a card, a real card from the store, Hallmark card. And I wrote a real note inside that card, put a stamp on it and mail, got her, um, got her address off of her website and mailed it to her and said, congratulations, you're doing great things, this and that. And guess what that did? It made my phone ring. Yes, I know all about the power of greeting cards. <laughs> Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> right. So yeah. um, that was that was pretty much, um, you know, the start of it. it. To me, it was like, wow, if I do a little bit, if I pay attention and do a little bit of marketing and and do marketing from the heart, not from the the wallet or out of greed or trying to move things along just for the sake of money, then. Um, powerful things happen. It makes the phone ring and, and people offer you jobs. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the first big kick in the pants for me that I can totally do this. Um, and that's kind of how it started for me. Right. So you were um, not exactly lucky because you used a strategy of keeping in touch with people that you'd known from your past life, which has helped you build your business. So you were doing a lot right and getting good results. I bet you probably, being a human being, made some mistakes along the way as well, right? All day, every day. <laughs> I, I, so what's the biggest you mistake you made? <laughs> the biggest mistake I've made is holding on to somebody too long. Somebody being somebody being a partner or or a virtual assistant or anything like that. I think the oh. biggest mistake is having an ego that says I can fix them and oh. holding on too long to where it wasn't productive for them. It wasn't productive right. for me and it wasn't productive for the organization or the client for that matter. You know, the, the biggest person mm. of all. So I think that's probably my biggest mistake is holding on too long rather than just having those candid conversations up front and just being open and honest that, um, you know, sometimes, and I mean, there are times where I've put people in a position they weren't ready for. Um, mm. and, and that's what it leads to. Um, and other than that, I think the other mistake is honestly just patience, wanting it too fast. Um, and, and thinking that because I have this brilliant idea that it's going to materialize in a week or two and, and things are going to start happening and it's going to be smooth sailing. So I think, um, patience and then the, the kind of slash with that is expectations, right? Because mm -hmm. what happens is you have these brilliant ideas and and you think they're going to work so you have all these all these delusions of grandeur and all these expectations that go along with it and so what i really had to learn is all right what's going to happen is going to happen and you really just kind of have to let go and um i i'm a big baseball fan um so if anybody out there understands this analogy it's really sitting on the fastball but adjusting to the curve when you're a when you're a batter and you're in the batter's box you're you're expecting one thing from the pitcher and you're sitting there sitting there sitting there but then he throws that curveball and you have to be able to adjust right yeah life does that too not only oh yes <laughs> sport. right so um i think from my experience that that situation with sticking with the wrong people too long actually applies to other business situations as well that you will attract people into your life who want to join your team or want to be your VA or want to be your client even and somehow it doesn't go as well 
And you're right, it is difficult to move on. One does sort of feel, well, if only I sort of encouraged a little bit more or supported a bit more or was a little more patient and, you know, then they'll come through eventually. And sometimes they do. I've right. heard stories about that. I mean, arguably, I'm, I've been like that myself in my past. I wasn't always this absolutely amazing superwoman. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but they don't always. And it can drag you back and also be emotionally draining and also use up lots of your valuable time. And please, you know, let's help everyone understand that time is money because so many um, young and small entrepreneurs don't get that. And they spend hours doing stuff that really should have been given to somebody else so that they can get on and do the important stuff. Oh, I can't, I can't um, agree with that anymore. Um, that's, it's one of the weird dichotomies, I guess, because we tell everybody to be patient, right? But mm -hmm. at the same time, you, you have to go fast. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, with your, with your big, your big ticket ideas is where you have to be patient for things to come together. But in the day to day, in the dirt, while you're executing and doing things, that's where you really have to be fast. And um, so I think that really kind of messes up with a lot of people's head is when you're, when you're sitting with them and you're saying, well, be patient, be patient, it'll come. And then at, on the other side of your mouth, you're telling them, but you need to move. And that confuses a lot of people. Yes. And I think it's important to let them know that, yes, patience is part of it. However, also, you need to be able to keep up. Um, you need to be able to eliminate time wasters and, and to, um, you know, meetings that go too long are, are a business killer, right? And I think a lot of times we get wrapped up in that we're doing things when we have those meetings, when really um, in, in some of the workshops that I teach, we call them blah, 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 blah sessions. Mm -hmm. It's just people pontificating and, and trying to get out ideas or play politics. And it doesn't really, you know, end up anywhere. Um, so yes, definitely um, going fast um, is part of the equation. Right, but I think we can apply the patience and the speed to two different things. I think in some ways we have to be patient with the results that we're looking for. 100%. But we need to take action with a sense of urgency. Absolutely. Because the action that we take will lead to the results in the end. Right. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, whoo, no. That was a lesson learned from me. <laughs> that, was a, that was a tough one for me. Oh, you've beaten me to my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. But yes, okay. um, most of that is getting wrapped up in trying to make everything perfect rather than just making it is what it is. And then again, adjusting as you go along. Um, and what you find in that adjusting as you go along, I think, is how to become a professional, how to do that job well, how to um, actually master your craft. So in all the mistakes that you make along the way, that's where, that's where all the gold is, actually. It's absolutely true. Yeah, and that comes up a lot. And I think that the people that succeed as entrepreneurs to the people who succeed in sport as well as we're going to bring that in as we've already brought that in is the way that they view and react to things like that because I think the people who don't make it are the people who take things personally and then feel as though because they've made a mistake they've failed at something they mucked something up they angered a client who then disappeared or lost half their downline or whatever it is or you know the someone moved in next door in their um who does exactly the same business and they've pinched all their clients or whatever it is oh yeah somehow they've done something wrong they, they were after this amazing client and they lost a sale they then feel as though they're not good enough and they they it slows them down and then once the momentum slows down and the energy goes out of things, things get even slower. Exactly. Get exactly. So 
in order to be able to carry on despite the mistakes is to turn them into lessons so that and to find a solution and to come back because you are as valuable as you can solve problems for other people and you don't learn how to solve problems unless you're solving your own problems right i agree i absolutely agree what um over the past few years i've actually really turned to studying the ancient stoics and one of the things that i've picked up from doing that was Marca, marcus aurelius often said often said that the obstacle is the way and so when you run into those obstacles and then you find out how to push through the wall or get over the boulder or around it, whatever you have to do, and the answer is not always the same. And I think that's something that we really need to um, stress to people is we, li we like to put all our solutions and to all our problems in a nice little easy, easy box, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's not always that way. And it's, there's, there's always going to be a time where we're going to have to think critically and, and a little bit different. Um, so ab I absolutely agree with, with what you're saying there. I also think that um, you brought up a really important point of, I could tell a little story about it, is mm. when we think, oh, the neighbor moved in next door and they do exactly what I do. I was working with a client here locally um, who owns a barber shop in Old Town and we were doing some marketing and doing a lot of things. And um, the one thing he immediately brought up was, well, there are a ton of barber shops in a five mile, five mile radius here. And so why would I even do that? And, and I'm like, well, yeah, you're right. It's true that, you know, you do have a lot of barbers in the area and there are a lot of choices for the customers. What, what's going to set you apart is, you do it differently than the rest of these barbers. And that is what makes you valuable. And that's what makes you, you know, valuable to your clients. So you need to get out there and really start telling your story, not the story of how to get a haircut, but the story of how you give a haircut and how you make people feel when they come to your shop. So there's a different way. I mean, we're not talking about a fancy salon for ladies that does all sorts of elaborate stuff. We're talking about a barbershop for men, which is very simple and very straight and very plain. And men can be fussy and they know what they're expecting and they know what they want. How can you make that different from the other people in the five mile radius? Oh, wow. Let me tell you, because... Um... <laughs> Uh, I'll be open and honest. It's actually my barber, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> give him a shout out, Michael Ramos over at R&B Shave Parlor um, in Temecula and Old Town. But here's the thing is, you're right. Most barber shops are, you know, just um, walk in, give me a, what, what they mostly say today is, give me a, give me a fade, use whatever clip that, that you want, and, and you move forward. And what Michael did is he actually took it a little, a little bit back to a time where you walked into the barber and he actually does much like you and I do. We ask questions before we get started with our clients. Yeah. And so does he, he does a mini consultation right in the chair and he, he reads through the lines of what people want and, and through asking questions and he comes to realize here's a couple recommendations I can give you be my guest, choose, choose if you'd like to try this or not. And then people do. And then he adds in things like um, a massage and a hot towel and things that you're not necessarily going to get in super cuts. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, um, he, he costs a little bit more than super cuts, but you know what? When, when I leave there, I am very, very happy. I feel great. I like to tell everybody about it. Um, and I don't think you get that from your regular, you know, 1995 barber or or right. even your 1095 barber so um to yes. be able to learn to tell that story rather than just kind of sit there in the midst of all that barbershop noise in a five mile radius and say choose me choose me choose me right right so he's done two things actually he's taken the product which is the haircut and made that as good as it could possibly be 
And then attached to the haircut, which is the product, comes the experience, mm -hmm. which you can't get anywhere else. Exactly. It's Not anywhere close, fun. that's for sure. Yeah. He, he really has a, a unique setup. It's warm and inviting when you walk in. Um, you're offered a beverage. It's just it's just a a great experience, like you like you said. And yeah. that's where the difference is. So um I think if people were to take a minute and and kind of reach inward, right? You have to mm. you you have to um, I forgot what I was watching a little bit earlier today, actually. And what what I think a lot of home-based business owners could benefit from today is to unlearn what they know, relearn, and then teach. And rather than teach, just share, right? So mm -hmm. if you unlearn everything that you think you know and that, that you have down, and then you relearn maybe just a few ways how to do it. And then rather than teach, because teach can be daunting, right? It's like, mm -hmm. well, who am I to be a to be a professional and teach this? I'm not a teacher. I'm mm -hmm. not good at that. Well, then just share. And guess what? Social media is a great way to share. Mm -hmm. And and if if you just kind of share what you're learning or what you're doing, all of a sudden, if you're just a little bit consistent with it you, you kind of have a, a, a good social media channel rather than doing what everybody else is doing. Okay. So on the subject of social media, mm -hmm. um, which is not my, uh, not my best area, it's not my area of expertise, should I okay. say, which is one of the reasons that you're here. Tell us a little bit about social media, because that is one of the areas that you support your clients in, isn't it? Absolutely. Hmm. So um, that's, it's something I think that a lot of my clients struggle with. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with in general because they have a, they have a preconceived idea that you can, you can use this tool to be a free way to blast your message out there rather than looking at it at is all they really are are media channels and you have to find a way to just tell your story and share and if you can do that and it doesn't have to be great it doesn't have to you don't have to be the best order you don't have to be the best writer you don't have to look the best on camera but what if, if you can find the thing that you do best if you're a great writer blog if you're a uh if you like the camera and you like to you like to get out there and and be in the spotlight you know do a show do a video blog do something on video or or even just do a daily video you know vlog that that's a great way too and um you know if you if you can put images together with text and music you know throw out content like that and if you can do those things um, consistently and just educate or entertain, I think that's where people will find more value rather than just being the commercial. Um, mm. I think a lot of people um, would find it interesting that soap operas um, came around, were invented to sell soap. That's why they're called soap operas, um, mm -hmm. is because they were invented to sell soap. So they were they use the platform of radio and television to tell stories and then every now and then would talk about soap. It wasn't all soap, 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 soap. Um, also, um, interestingly enough, way back in the day, I don't know if a lot of people know that the Guinness Book of World Records um, was started by the beer company, Guinness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's because back in the day, the, the pubs, weren't doing so well. And what they noticed was that people liked trivia. Um, you know, trivia and bars, even today, goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And so what they found was a way to um, attach the Guinness name to trivia, and it brought sales back around. So what they were doing is they were using trivia to sell beer, rather than just saying, drink my beer, drink my beer, drink my beer. That's so interesting because both of those things are now so closely associated with what they're connected to. 
that our minds, even a hundred years later, or whatever it is, decades for sure, mm -hmm. can't separate them. Everybody right. knows what a soap opera is. When somebody says the Book of World Records, your brain automatically fills in Guinness. Mm -hmm. it, they're just not separated. Nobody, they haven't dropped the Guinness thing. It's still associated with what it was connected to in the beginning. Although, that, obviously, it's not only about selling beer anymore. I mean, it's become iconic. Right. And, and that's the power of brand, right? right? That's what makes it so powerful is now, now it's bigger than just selling beer, right? And so if you, can, if you can be consistent like that, you have a better shot at be creating that initial awareness and then having people remember you. I mean... Right. You can, you can these days, and I've seen it myself, mm -hmm. um, upstairs, turn on Netflix, the, the little, the little um, audio thing comes up, that ding or whatever it is, and downstairs, whoever's downstairs will know that I'm watching Netflix up here. Or even if you hear that little roar of the THX sound that comes out before a movie, that little boom, you know it gets embedded in your brain. So I think that's where, um, that's where, you know, identity and branding come into play. And if you can take those elements and doesn't have to be fancy, it just has to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, that will really help you on social media and really just go out there, share your story, educate and entertain you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the perfect equipment, the perfect lighting. Um, it, it's okay to trip over your words. Um, be, be yourself and, um, you know, just share. Right. And when you start working with clients, you dig quite deep into what their business is about, even if they haven't done it themselves mm -hmm. in order to get the messaging really close to you know what what people need to hear about what they're doing right exactly but you don't only do social media you do other things no yeah we definitely do other things and to your point we start with strategy and mm -hmm. that's that digging deep and really having an understanding of who our customers customers are um mm -hmm. because like you said, most, most small business owners haven't done that deep dive yet. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they were never taught to Plum plumbers don't necessarily go and do a deep dive because they're plumbing or whatever it is. But mm -hmm. the, the thing is, is when you understand your customers, it makes it quite easy then to know what message you need to be um, telling, um, who you need to tell it to, when you need to tell it to them, why you need to tell it to them, right? So there's that. And so mm -hmm. we start with strategy. We also, um, we also have um, a bunch of partnerships with Google. We're Google partner, we're Shopify partner. So with all the big software as a solution providers, we've partnered with them to be able to offer software solutions and um, build automated processes and workflows and things like that. Um, we all, like I mentioned, um, e-commerce, um, it's huge right now, especially with COVID. Um, people um, can, if you're, you can be a 90-year-old grandma who can knit shawls and put up a website and start selling them these days. I mean, it's never been a greater time to be an entrepreneur, which is really cool. There, it, you can have a website up um, relatively shortly if you're not trying to do a whole bunch. And so that's really neat. And we show people how they can do that. And like I mentioned, we partnered with Shopify um, to help, you know, um, have the tools to do that. We also do... Um, we do creative, which is basically graphic arts and things like that um, to help build identities. Mm -hmm. Part of branding, the, before branding, um, you have to have an identity. And that's a lot of people associate branding with their logo. But I would argue that the logo is really their identity and becomes before the brand. There's a lot more to brand than just the logo. Um, right. And that's probably a whole different subject for a whole different show. But right. so... 
we we do um, identity creation and logos and things like that. And then also media. Um, like you said um, earlier, we're trying to help people um, operate in a modern business world. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I learned from um, a fellow named Gary Vaynerchuk, a lot of people might mm -hmm. know him, but Gary V, he basically um, taught me that no matter what you do these days, because of the internet and because of social media, your business is twofold. Your whatever it is you're doing slash media company. And um, that's because you have to be able to tell your story in a meaningful way so that people can garner, you can garner trust from your audience and that they want to buy from you and they want to keep buying from you. So, right. um, you know, we, we, it's difficult to wrap your head around all of these things. And so those are the five pillars that we do to kind of take a holistic approach to yeah. help people. It's, it's awful hard when you're building a website for the person who's also doing your marketing. If, if one person's building your website and all they do is build websites, they don't necessarily connect all those dots to all the other things that are going on these days. And what we've learned is that sales, marketing and sales and operations and leadership, those four pieces of the puzzle are really connected these days. And if you can have people that have that know your values and can connect all those dots for you all under one roof, it's a little bit easier of a journey. Right. Yes, that makes complete sense. And as you said, having everything in one place also makes sense because if you are going to spend time doing a strategy session, so you get the story right, once your foundation is there, your website, the story then continues. You don't want to then go somewhere else and have to start all over again or go somewhere else where they're not actually going to dig so deep so that they actually really get the, to the heart of who the company is to continue with the, the, you know, the broadcasting of information. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. What we like to do is do work that matters for people who care. And that's why there's not like, not everybody out there is for us. There are people who don't care that their website's just thrown up there real quick and they they want to take a used car sales approach or they just want it fast and, and things like that. That's okay. That mm -hmm. There's a big world out there. But for, for the people that do care long-term about their operation, that do have um, you know goals that they want to reach and they want their business to be handed down to um, you know, maybe a, a child or a sibling or, you know, even for, for me, it was always leave a legacy. Um, and I think that's why I have a bigger picture approach, but mm -hmm. that's, um, that's kind of why we take that approach is we like to work with the people who do care about those things. Mm -hmm. And for me, never mind how corny it sounds, it is about making a difference. You know, Absolutely. even if it's only one person. I'd like it to be millions, obviously, <laughs> because there's so much for people to learn and there's so much to teach. And I love this area so much. No, it's, um, a, it's a wonderful thing. You're 100% right. And I, I don't think it's corny at all. I, <laughs> I, I agree with that, that making a difference. And, if, um, and that's, why we, that's why we love the changing hearts and minds part of it, because yeah. when, when it clicks for somebody, when, when that light bulb goes on and they say, oh, I get it. So I don't have to do what everybody else does and it's going to be okay. And it, if we go down this path, the, the results are more than likely going to be in my favor, even though, you know, it's not going to be the way I envisioned it at first. Right. And it's like, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And when, when, when those smiles come and the eyes light up and, yeah. and not only that, the, the, these small business owners who thought, no, I'm just doing this. And all of a sudden, when we have these conversations, the ideas that they have and the mm -hmm. value that they start bringing to the table mm -hmm. comes out of them is amazing to mm -hmm. watch. And that's what I love doing mm -hmm. this for is seeing that happen. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of, uh, uh, 
there was an insurance um, company that I was working with a couple months back, and they wanted a they wanted an in house class. They wanted me to come and talk to them, and what they wanted to talk about were tactics. What do we need to do to do this? How often do we need to post? How do we need to post? What platforms? You know, and and all these things. They wanted all these tactics, and I reeled it back in, and I said, "Let's just talk about who you are and what you do," and as they started talking about who they are and what they did and then the why that they did it. And then when they, when we started uncovering the why they did it, all of that messaging and story and everything that everybody seems to be afraid of or doesn't know what to do started oozing out of them. And then by the time we left, we started with zero idea of what we wanted to do to honestly a good 25 to 40 ideas just from a group of oh i think there was four or five of them in there that mm. they were like okay so we ended up starting a podcast and now they're talking on a weekly basis to their audience about their own journeys how they help people and what that what that when they help people what it does for those people and they don't have to talk a whole lot about selling insurance. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's the point. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Very nicely done indeed. So, um, this is a bit of a change in direction slightly. Sure. Going back to the you as a business owner yourself, Mm -hmm. rather than you helping other business owners. So what's the best investment that you made for your business? The best investment mm -hmm. I made for my business was investing in myself, in learning, in, in teaming up with professionals that knew more than I did and being willing to say, yes, you have something I need and I don't expect it for free. Your time is worth something. I'd like to pay to learn um, from you. And with that, I leveled up. And mm. so it wasn't about, for me, it was about just learning more, learning about what I'm doing wrong rather than about more about what I'm doing right. Because in learning from, from these people, um, what I'm finding out is that, you know, my preconceived ideas weren't cutting it and i had to be able to one invest in you know myself and then really invest in um learning the things that i wanted to do so quite frankly um i wanted to start i wanted to learn about me i wanted to open up a media division right mm -hmm. and that was the big that was the big goal well what i started it with was i need to learn how to just talk into a microphone so i bought a microphone and i mean oh um sorry about that google was listening <laughs> um so i bought a microphone and i learned about the microphone um so you know really just the biggest investment were the everyday little investments that are going to lead up to the whole and the microphone then turned into light stands and light stands then turned into a mixing board. And next thing you know, I can have a little media studio. It's not fancy. I didn't spend a whole lot. So the best investment was the time to learn all of these things. So then once I knew about them, then I can bring other people in that knew even more than me and say, here, run with this. But now, now I know that we can start this and I know that we can do, you know, do something more to help people than we initially started with just strategy and just mm -hmm. social media. Well, social media was great, but how are we going to create that content that goes along with it? And mm -hmm. so investing the time, I think a lot of people think that now think about this, especially with social media, it's like it, it moves so fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, not too long ago. Um, you know, um, it was really about Facebook and then it moved into Instagram and mm -hmm. then it moved into, um, oh goodness, whatever Snapchat else is out there, Snapchat, TikTok. which TikTok, right? And it yeah. hasn't been that long. Well, if you think about it, MySpace was the first kid on the block. Yeah, and, and it's gone. And it's gone. 
Yeah. But, and people, well, why would I want to take the time and energy to learn all about my space when it's going to be gone in a couple of years? Well, guess what? All the things that you're going to learn there are going to apply to the next thing that come along, right? Yeah, so, I've noticed that several times in my life. I don't even realize now that I'm using things that I learned before. And when I learned them, I really couldn't quite see why it would be worth it or how exactly. it would help in the future. Yeah, some exactly. of the things that I'm doing now are like, oh gosh, thank goodness I learned this whenever that was. Yeah, absolutely. So mm. even my kids make fun of me. My, I was on TikTok <laughs> before my kids were, and there's a couple of my kids that aren't even on TikTok, and they still make fun of me, right? Mm. Um, but as soon as it came out, I was taking the time to learn it, and and mm. what made it what made it move. Now, don't get me wrong; I don't necessarily use it a lot. My mm. audience right now currently isn't in um, that that TikTok range as far as demographics is concerned. However, another project I'm doing that I'm working on, you know, later down the line is. So I want to make sure right. I know that and I want to see how it works and, and, yes. and do that. And the, the, what happens is these, um, these products grow and they mature. Mm -hmm. You know, Facebook started in a dorm room and it started with college kids and now if you're using Facebook, you know, it's, it skews primarily 50 and older. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah, well, the other 40... the kids have moved on somewhere else, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, there, there's yeah. not, a, there's not a lot of younger millennials and Gen Z's that are on Facebook. Right. However, um, you know, if you, so to learn these things, um, and, and grow up with them and then learn what's coming along, you know, behind is, is definitely imperative. Now I'm not saying spend every waking moment, but when things come out, spend an hour or two, um, a month, you know, if you can right. get, you know, three to four weeks, an hour or two, and just kind of learn it, yeah. you're good. If you use it, great. If you don't, the next thing that comes along is probably going to be closely mirrored to that because all they yeah. do is steal from each other. <laughs> <laughs> these platforms all the you know it, instagram you know um stole from snapchat and then became huge snapchat was well on its way to knocking instagram over but then instagram stole from snapchat did it better and snapchat kind of fell away and instagram blew up mm. So not to confuse people into thinking that they've got to now sit down and learn all these different social media channels because they can adopt the policy that I have. And you did that because that was what your business was going to be. Mm -hmm. But to avoid any confusion of people thinking they've got to learn all this stuff because they're going to be in business and every business needs it, they need to know enough to be able to delegate it to somebody else and make sure that person is doing a good job and getting it done well and how to measure results, that sort of a thing. They need a basic understanding. They always have done. There are three elements that I can think of off the top of my head right now about running a business. And the first is what your business is. Like you said, it could be insurance or it could be, you know, a copywriter or something like that mm -hmm. and then there's the admin of running the business which is all about you know handling your money and keeping track of things and where things go and how you follow up and stuff like that which leads into marketing and sales and the sales process and as business owners we need to have an idea of these things because we know that we know what we're doing we know that we know what our business is if we're writers or plumbers or insurance brokers you know that we do know but most often we don't know the rest of it which is why most often according to these statistics and you know we can all look this up on google it without that part of it companies don't make it so often Hence this platform, because this platform is going to fill in a lot of those gaps for people, like we've talked about media and social media today and promotion and marketing and touched a little bit on, you know, how selling works. And we're going to explore these, you know, with various experts in much greater detail as the show progresses. 
but you just need to have enough to know what you're looking for and that the people you're, you then delegate it to as your business grows are doing a good job, right? Well, um, yes, to an extent. And, and let, me, let me explain. Um, while I do believe that you shouldn't be wrapped up, you need to work on your business and not in your business, I believe. So, um, you know, you can't definitely be a social media guru while you're a plumber, right? And I yeah, think that's exactly. what you're really trying to say. Yeah, um, yeah. How, and however, in these times, you still do need to make sure that if you are whatever it is you are doing slash media company, that you have to know it at a high level. And then, yes, delegating is, is definitely something you probably need to do um, more, more, more than likely. Um, but when you're just getting started, you may not have the the um, resources to hire out so know enough and and um, I think what we need to what I need to do is let people know you don't have to do it all right you right. Um, you don't have to be on every single platform you don't have to you know um, start putting out 50 pieces of content a day um, you, you ultimately can, and it's, it, it's funny cause it's not really all that hard once you, once you get into it, but the point being is get started and be consistent. Um, mm -hmm. and once you can, once you can get with that level of consistency, then things will become easier. You'll get to know it better. It'll be, it won't take as much time because you're going to get a little bit better at it each time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. definitely do that, but no, you don't play in that sandbox all day long, you know, and, and become this magnificent guru because then you're not being who you are and what yes. you do and, and right. serving your customers. So, yeah. And very importantly, you don't need to be playing in the mall. In fact, what you want to do is figure out where your business is at its strongest and which audience that strongest bit of the business appeals to and then find where they are and then communicate to them where they are. Oh yes, oh yes, which is why I like your point of, you know, so many businesses get into it and then they fall off. And I think that's, well, I don't think, I know that's why we, a, a light bulb went on in my head and it was like, we need to start with strategy. And mm. that applied to us first, um, mm. to, we, we, we were doing, we were, we were handling all these deliverables and doing these projects mm -hmm. And along the way, we realized that we were losing a lot of time in educating when we were getting asked questions mm -hmm. as things moved on. And I was like, okay, um, one, this is valuable information. Two, this is taking a lot of time. Had we taken the time to do this up front, we'd probably be able to move along on the deliverables even faster. So let's do that. And um, it was like, oh, we need to make this a product. Um, and what we found out is that if we're willing to take that time up front and build that rock solid foundation using strategy first, that it's well worth it um, rather than um, making all the mistakes. It's like, it's like when you're young, right? And, and your parents are telling you, look, I've been through that. I've been there, done that. Here, here's, here's the way to go. I'm not going to make you do it, but I'm just letting you know. And had I listened back then, my life would have been a lot different. <laughs> and so um, I think that so many businesses, if they took the time to, to dig into their why they're doing things rather than the, I'm trying to make a quick buck. And look, I understand that there are times where you need to just sell, especially in the beginning. You're going to say yes to a lot more projects or, or, or um, customers mm -hmm. than you typically would in the beginning. And that's okay. You have to stay afloat. You have mm -hmm. to sell first in order to maintain. We get that. But if you can take the time to, to you know, kind of lay things out and, and sit with somebody who you trust that can lay out a strategy, it, it is so valuable. Yeah, it really is. It's the basis of everything, um, the bedrock on which you can then build your successful oh, business. Yeah. So um, this is something that you offer to people to support them in getting going, and then you might 
continue working with them or you might not continue working with them. Did I get that right? Yeah, correct. Um, yeah. So when we, when we provide our services, um, what we do is we like to start with strategy. And I think it's the most valuable. And once we lay out a roadmap of maybe some tools that you need or some other things that are necessary to keep going, we, we present that roadmap along with some recommendations and um, clients are more than more than welcome to choose to go another route. Maybe they already have somebody in mind that can knock those things out for them. Great. Fantastic. Or they can choose to work with us and, and keep going on. Like, mm -hmm. like you said, what, what we typically like to do is no matter what, always kind of keep touch with the client, see what's going on, see where, see where their roadmap is taking them and check in. And, and really that, that's all there is to it because going back to what we spoke about a little bit earlier, it's that making the difference. So for us, if we can get the light bulb to go on and the smile and the excitement, mm -hmm. that, that's, where, that's where we really work. Um, the deliverables are great um, and they really help. And that's why we've um, partnered with the best in the business as far as solutions go. Um, but yeah, that's really how we work is we, we start with, uh, with that foundation. And if you choose to go elsewhere, great. We'll even give recommendations because a lot of times, um, f especially for people just starting out we're we're not as affordable, um, which is why we've partnered with, with you. Um, and my home biz is because you can service that, that, um, home-based business person in a way that we can't, um, which is, again, why getting out there and, and um, not, not being too proud to work with somebody can open up so many doors, mm -hmm. right? We, we started out with a conversation months ago that has really turned into something where it's going to be a win-win for, for both us personally and our organizations. And that, that's where the real magic is. Mm. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. So... Go to our website, which is myhomebiz.tips. That's myhomebiz.tips. And there's a page where our guests are featured. So you'll find Gia Zuniga from Aptech Group, a little bit of a bio and links to his website. But your website is apptechgroup.com. Yeah. Yes, it's okay. A P P T E K G R O U P. We are doing a little bit of a facelift right now um, because we realigned everything we're doing, um, but definitely come and visit, um, you know, leave your email address to get on our list and um, find out when the, when the new websites get launched or, you know, just drop a question. Um, we'd be more than happy to talk to you um, and answer some questions if things, um, you know, come up and you're just like, oh, I wonder. Mm, we're, we're yeah, here to answer. Absolutely, absolutely. And you'll be back as well, won't we? Won't you? We'll oh, be seeing you again. I hope to see you a lot because it's always a good time. Like you said, we gel and, and we bounce off of each other and it gets the juices flowing. And yeah. I hope to be back a lot because, um, you know, there, there's a big world of entrepreneurs out there. And I think you and I both have a mission to help them as much as we can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So on the website, there's a contact form. If you have a question for GR or for any of our guests, actually, put it in there and we'll get it through or just go straight to his website and communicate with him there. And if there's enough questions on a certain subject, we'll then have a show all about just that certain subject. Our absolutely. purpose is to give you as much of the useful information that we can which we wish we'd had when we were starting. <laughs> right? Right, exactly. So oh, we've man. got a few minutes left. The benefits of being an entrepreneur. Now, the world is a different place now, and a lot of people are ending up being made to be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because there are things happening. And I heard yesterday somebody I was talking to said her neighbors are both off work for two weeks right now because they were in contact with somebody who had a positive COVID test. Mm. They don't have their results yet, but they've been told no work for two weeks. And of course, it's unpaid. So that entire oh. family has now no income for two weeks. And that's got to hurt. So I'm thinking, okay, you've got two weeks to get something going. <laughs> and we've got two weeks to get started. So a lot of people aren't choosing to be entrepreneurs right now, whereas you and I both made a, a conscious choice to do that. 
So for those of them, those of you who are thinking, I have no idea how I'm going to navigate this, what are the benefits, GR, of being an entrepreneur? The benefits are that I think one is choice and freedom because as long as you have a skill set, you can, you can mold and mend and pivot because not every idea is going to work. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have that freedom to try things and fail and find the one that, that fits and that works. And so I, I think that that's really a, a big benefit. Mm -hmm. But the, the other things are, is you're not tied down to a paycheck that um, may or may not be there. Um, to your point earlier, um, a few minutes ago, you said that things had changed and they're definitely changed. Um, the, these jobs that we go to these days really aren't that security blanket that they once were. Um, they don't all offer benefits. They don't all offer um, a, a paycheck no matter what, like you just um, illustrated right now. And so, you know, I've always been of the mind that left to my own devices, um, I can make something happen. Um, and, and honestly, it doesn't even have to be glamorous. Let, let me be quite honest. When I first started Aptech Group and went full time, I had, I had to um, be cleaning toilets at night just to keep the doors open, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I did it, you know, I did it. I made that choice to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it and how I wanted to do it. Right. And in this day and age with, with technology, with the internet, it, there's such a low barrier to entry now, you know, for us to do what we're doing right now, 15 years ago would have cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment and things like that. Right. And now we can just jump out there and get on it and get going, whether it's just a side hustle to, to get me through two weeks. Um, and, and maybe I learned that I'm good at something um, and can make a few extra dollars to get through it. That's the benefit of it. Um, the the benefit of being able to do things that you love to do mm. um, is also huge in my book. Um, it, it's it's freeing to me. Mm. That that's the biggest thing. I hated. I hate. I hated the stresses of going to work nine to five and ple trying to please people that weren't ever going to be pleased. And don't get me wrong. I still have stresses and headaches now in my own, in, in being a, a business owner and an entrepreneur. However, they're all self-induced. They're my headaches <laughs> they're, I created them. And so like it or not, it's okay. I can deal with them and I'm much more willing to work, you know, the, the 10 to 12 hours a day, like I used to, but do it with a smile now. Sometimes it's not a smile, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I, I'm willing to push through. Mm. Yeah, or take a day off as and when you feel like it. Absolutely, yeah. and there are those times that you need it. <laughs> Travel and work from somewhere different, because it doesn't matter, okay, a home-based business doesn't necessarily mean it's got to be in your home. I work from my mother's home quite a lot and my brother's home and my aunt's home and they're all in different places in Europe. Sure. So, you know, you can, you can run your business again because of the modern technology that we're all using from anywhere. Absolutely. Next and week I'm taking, oh, excuse me, uh, I'm taking four days next week. I'm going to the beach and I'll exactly. work on the beach, you know, early exactly. and then right about, you know, 10, 12 o'clock I'll cut off and have four days of relaxing with the family. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So as a final thought, in a few words, what one piece of valuable advice would you share with our audience today? The one piece of advice is don't be afraid to fail um, and be patient. Mm -hmm. Really, I think, is the, the two things that are invaluable to me is don't be afraid to fail and be patient. Okay, fabulous. I love it. Thank you very much, Gia Zuniga from Aptec Group. This was My Home Biz Tips. Check out the website, myhomebiz.tips for more information on Gia, on me, on how we help and support people, and who's coming up next on the show who we spoke to previously on the show. All our experts are on the website. Ask any questions you want. Lovely to talk to you all. 
And we'd really look forward to seeing you here again next week. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.